Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and today I'm going to show you where Jeremy Hogan gives his predictions for an SEC settlement. That is coming up right in a second. First, I wanted to show you this, where the market is. We're at $2.355 trillion. Uh, XRP is up 11.79% at $1.41. Here, this is a good clip from Jeremy. I just watched it, and by the way, he is Legal Briefs. Go give him a subscribe. He's doing an, an excellent job um, covering the XRP uh, SEC case, Ripple SEC case. All right, here we go. Listen up. This is a good clip right here. ...and maybes and ems and ahs in those memos. They never say anything for sure in those memos of law. So I'm not sure how much hay the SEC will be able to make out of them. Next, let's look at paragraph C. Quote, the SEC's guidance did not provide fair notice. First, there was no guidance until 2017, and from that point forward, the guidance was focused on ICOs, which Ripple never had. The lawsuits brought by the SEC back then, the Recoin case, the Kick Interactive cases, those were all ICOs involving companies raising money to actually create the blockchain itself. That's not Ripple's situation. In fact, the XRP ledger was apparently in existence before Ripple was in existence. It's kind of backwards. Next, Ripple cites public statements by then Chairman Clayton, suggesting that what makes digital assets more like a security is when the offer is for, quote, interest in a yet to be built system. And obviously that is not Ripple's situation either. Obviously, Ripple in 2017 already had an already built system. And then Ripple really gets to go to town for another couple pages, distinguishing between every official and unofficial SEC statement in which the SEC said, quote, don't do it this way. And Ripple says, quote, we weren't doing it that way. And that's how it goes for a couple pages. Now, Ripple brings in no less than six articles by the SEC or its employees, two no action letter responses where the SEC said it would not take action against a company because the funds were not being used to build out the infrastructure. Ripple talks about the FinCEN and Department of Justice settlement, which found that XRP was a currency and subject to regulation as such. Heck, even my friend John Deaton gets one of his own sources in here, per the Deaton Declaration, distinguishing between ICOs promising to create an application and those where the network is up and running. And it goes on and on and on now. By page 26, you are so brainwashed by this memo, you feel like not only should Ripple be found not guilty, but should be given some kind of an award for service to humanity. So that when your enamored eyes finally see that Ripple starts to call out the SEC for making misleading statements to the court, that's just more of a cherry on top. Page 26, quote, in any event, the SEC's description of the discovery in this case, which is being ably managed by magistrate Judge Netburn, is incomplete and misleading. I even like the minor judge butt kissing in there as well. Well done. So, Suffice it to say that this was the most impressive pleading so far for me and really lays out half of Ripple's fair notice defense prediction. And I say this with as much legal certainty as there is in this crazy world. The fair notice affirmative defense will live on. SEC motion denied. But stop. Don't hit the button yet. Really fast. Predictions for settlement. The SEC litigation review meeting was held yesterday on the 13th. My prediction is that if Gary Gensler is going to pull back from this lawsuit and instead work for more regulatory clarity, it will happen in the next two weeks. If we go into June with no settlement, then this lawsuit has been adopted and supported by Chairman Gensler for better or worse. Now, if that is the case, I predict no settlement until September at the earliest because we have to get through the discovery. If there is no settlement and we go to summary judgment or trial, I predict, well, heck, I don't know. Do I look like a mind reader? Thanks for watching. All right, good hey, stuff. Hello. Well, if I can get past that. Okay, that, I thought that was great, his predictions on a settlement. Um, now, today, Zero Hedge put this out. Square has no plans to buy more Bitcoin financial news. And I had heard, I haven't seen the source, but I had heard that they made a comment about, you know, that it was because of the Tesla thing. Okay, PhD um, sent me this. The crypto and policy, we did it the petition to SEC 
Chair Gary Gensler obtained over 30,000 signatures, many voices united in demanding an investigation of Clayton and Hinman ending the war on XRP and working together to set a cl clear and sane U.S. rules for crypto. Now, com this combined with what Jeremy um, Hogan just said, you're going to know very well whether Gary Gensler is on the side of the XRP holders or not <laughs> here in the next week or two. If he keeps this thing going, uh, in my mind, he won't be any different than Jay Clayton at that point. Um, okay, PolySign. All right, the other day this came out and I covered it. Exciting news at first uh, close of our Series B fundraising. PolySign is forming a strategic partnership with Cowan following their leading $25 million investment. Now, when this came out, I went and showed that Cowan, the number one investor in Cowan is BlackRock, okay? So follow me here because I wanted to go a little further down this road. All right, this is a person that works at Cowan. I did not realize it, but Cowan has a, they have the Cowan Sustainable Investments. Okay, this lady works for that. And let's look at her resume. Co-head of CSI Cowan. So the sustainable investment. Um, and that's where she is. But look where she was before. She was at BlackRock. And then if you go here, this is an article about Cowan Sustainable Invest Investments. Um, and it says it was established in 2018 to provide tailored financing and data analytics solution, solutions to companies that are accelerating the world's transition towards an environmentally sustainable economy. How many times have we heard the, these words, sustainable, out of Ripple, the World Economic Forum, you name it, this is the narrative that has been coming. You've seen it coming from a mile away. Well, here's another guy Sustain Brad Cavan, all right, if you go down, this guy was um, with Cowan as well, Vice President, Cowan Sustainable Investments. He's now with this company, but before that, he was with Black BlackRock, Renewable Power and Energy Infrastructure Investment Team at BlackRock. Now he's with this company called LEAF. Leaf, uh, learn more, sustainability is about more than just emissions, so it's all about sustainable investing that's the theme right so then you have this this was a tweet from ripple just by pure coincidence today ever wondered how cryptocurrencies stack up in terms of sustainability our green calculator can show you check it out now all of this is against the backdrop of what you're seeing now which is bitcoin and proof of work being attacked for the lack of sustainability and the climate issues and the energy wasting issues that proof of work has. We've been talking about this for a long time. So just by pure coincidence, the guy that is working on the, that works on the messaging, I'm responsible for shaping and sharing ripple message, message in video animation and audio production. Well, he was with BlackRock in, in San Francisco, and he was their global video production head, but now he works for Ripple, almost as if the messages from these firms are so similar that he would be a, it would be a great fit for him to go from BlackRock to Ripple. Now, here's another interesting thing I found with Cowan. This guy, Lawrence Leibowitz, he's with um, Independent Director at Cowan, okay, he's on the board of directors. Look where he was. He served as Chief Operating Officer, Head of Global Equities Markets, and as a member of the Board of Directors of NICE Euronext. Okay, so I went and looked at his LinkedIn. This is him. Down here you will see Board of Directors Cowan, and then there's Chief Operating Officer, Head of Global Equities Markets, member of the Board of Directors at NICE Euronext, right? So what? Well, here's the so what. Look right here. He's also a director at NYDIG. Well, I recognize that company. NYDIG is the same company that Chris Larson told us that he had moved his XRP wallet to, NYDIG. I've known the founders for a while and I'm impressed by their security and top-notch institutional standards. This is truly custody 2.0. Check them out. And then, so this is NYDIG. So the question I have immediately is, 
it, it sure makes sense that maybe PolySign is going to be handling the custody behind the scenes. They are custody 2.0 after all, right? Behind the scenes at NYDIG. And then, just, out, just so you know, NYDIG raises $200 million from strategic partners. Look who their strategic partners are. Stone Ridge Holdings Group. Well, here's Stone Ridge Holdings Group. Look who's on there. Ben Lofsky. He's the same guy that was on, at the board at, or an advisor or board at Ripple. Then he left there. Now he's at NYDIG. And look at their other investors. Morgan Stanley, New York Life, Mass Mutual. Up oh, Soros, George Soros Fund Management. There are no coincidences. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please, oh, I forgot to tell you something. Um, well, I'll finish it. Please subscribe. Hit the like button. Tell your friends and family that guess what? So Link2 just added a company called Carbon. Link2 is one of my sponsors. There, you can you can sign up in the in the description of this video. Um, they just added a company called Carbon, and Carbon is a Carbon is a, um, what do they call them? The 3D, it's, they're in the 3D printing business. And it says, I, I read this about it. It says, Lamborghini, one of Carbon's most well-known partners, is recognized for speed and exclusivity of its super cars and super sports utility vehicles. The Italian manufacturer is also known for introduction of new technologies. Uh, the procurement team at Lamborghini identified Carbon's digital, digital light synthesis as a valid way to digitally manufacture vehicle components. So all you Lambo dreamers out there, this company, Carbon, is actually, um, the, its product is used in building the Lamborghinis. I thought that was kind of interesting. So I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family. That I, that black, there are ties that I've noticed between BlackRock. We know that Robbie Mitch, Mitchnick left Ripple and went to head the digital asset division at BlackRock. We've never heard anything about him since. And ever since then, there's just all the, the same, it, these ties just are so obvious to me. But now that Cowan has, has bought into PolySign, it's even. Thank you.